Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here. For this episode, I want to make some fantasy scattered terrain. Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode. I recently got to play a couple games of Frostgrave with a friend of mine, Robert, here in Atlanta. And, you know, in Frostgrave, like many war games, you put out terrain for your miniatures to hide behind, climb up on, move around, things like that. But Robert pulled out a bunch of small pieces that we typically call scatter terrain. Uh, these consisted of, like, fallen columns. Uh, there was a, a, a pile of like trash debris. He had a bunch of it. And it really made me realize that while I have a lot of terrain that I make for the games I play, I don't have a lot of scatter terrain. So in this episode, I want to remedy that. I'm going to try to make a handful of fantasy scatter terrain pieces that I can use in my next frost grape game. Let's get to the tabletop and I'll get to work. I began this project by working on the collapsed tent piece. I just took some sticks, snapped them in various places, glued them together to form a frame, and I used some string to uh, to secure or to you know to act like rope that would secure the pieces. I had a strip of uh, leftover canvas, very thin canvas from a previous project, and what I did was I used it to make the material that would go over the tent. Uh, I cut this to size to match the lengths of the uh, the wooden beams and then I glued them to the wooden beams and I would lay them down so that I could sort of imitate a collapsed tent. You'll have to play around with this but you know whatever looks like a collapsed tent with the folds of the canvas and uh, and, and of course you'll dirty it up later. Experiment a bit until uh, you're happy with with the overall look. I rolled up another little piece uh, into what I, I guess it would be called a bedroll right here. Just cut a thin piece, roll it up until it's you know looks good to you. Uh, glue one piece to, to make the flap so it closes up on itself. And then I cut a piece of string and made a, a little um, tie that went around the middle of it. After gluing the bedroll on, I applied some tacky glue all around uh, the, uh, the base, dropped some small pebbles, and then some sand over it. I do this with all of the pieces, so they're all done identical with little rocks and sand for the basing. The next one I did was just a, a, a gathering of rubble. I had some leftover uh, barrels from a 3D printing project and a top of a crate. So I just glued these down to where they looked sort of like they had been pulled or pushed into a pile of rubble. I went back to the little pieces of wood uh, and broke them to, to create beams that would be scattered across uh, the pile. I also dug into my collection of sprues of for like uh, plastic soldiers. I removed a couple shields, uh, a spear, and I bent the spear and and just glued these in various places to look like they had been discarded. I roughed up the uh, the the uh, shields with um, my cutters and just to make them look look beat up. I took some string and wrapped it around one of the uh, the pieces of wood no idea what I was making here other than it just looked interesting it's visually appealing seal the end with another little drop of glue and then I broke this off and glued it across to make another piece of rubble once again I just used tacky glue all around the base and added little rocks and grains of sand for the basing The next part of the project was to make a fallen statue. So I had this uh, base that looked like what a statue would be standing on. I went to my sprues and got the body of a soldier that did not have the head or arms glued on. I used hot glue to secure the, uh, the body in place and added two little drops where the feet would have connected just to make it look like it was, you know, had been shattered off. 
And then I cut some arms. I took one that had like a spear and another one that was just pointing. And I found a suitable head. Just hot glued these down onto the base where I thought they might fall when the, when the statue fell and shattered into pieces. And then again, I went back over this whole thing with sand and little rocks for basing. Now for all three of these, what I did was I dipped a brush in water and then black paint so that it, the capillary action would pull it down into the sand. Just go all around, give everything a good thorough uh, base coating of black. I even did the, um, the statues and the bases and the various pieces. I did not do the canvas for the tents, but everything else got a base of black. Next, while that paint was drying, I went to my Proxon and I cut some strips of foam. Now I cut these in various thicknesses and various shapes like rectangles and squares. I did big ones, I did small ones. Just, they have to be sort of random. Just cut a bunch of random foam squares in various thicknesses and you're ready to go for this next piece. Now what this next piece is, is going to be a wall. So I took those pieces that I cut and I put them in a uh, container filled with rocks and I shook it up for about 30 seconds. And what this does is it just dulls the edges and makes the uh, stones look a little more realistic, a lot more worn. Poured them out, pulled out the rocks, and I had a nice collection of damaged uh, uh, stone to make the wall. So next I covered a piece of chipboard um, with tacky glue. I do this on both sides. And I just take the squares and the rectangles and I just randomly place them uh, wherever I think they look good. I didn't go all the way to the left or the right of the strip of chipboard and I did that for a reason. Uh, after this glue dries, I will trim everything flush and then give a jagged edge for uh, one side of the wall where I'll add later uh, foam pieces to indicate rubble that's fallen off the wall. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing. Next, I went back to my Proxon and I cut a couple of these uh, tall rectangles or cubes, cube-shaped uh, pieces. And then I used the bevel feature of the Proxon to cut a, a piece of, one of the pieces of foam to, to form a little monument of sorts. It's just a pillar that tapers to the top at a very small point, as you can see right here. I glued it down to a piece of chipboard after I went over each surface with a ballpoint pen to add like these arcane runes. Dig in real deep. You can make these very deep uh, as, so when the, when the painting part comes, they will stand out. Now when the glue dried on the wall, I went and like I said, I trimmed it flush on both sides. And then I took a piece of scissors after um, making a square, the rectangle, excuse me, then I cut a jagged edge. I went over, um, went over the top later with some more bricks to cover the seam. I cut out the monument, the shape of the base here, uh, just sort of circular, and went over it with the glue and added the rocks and the sand. Here I am gluing down the, uh, the wall to a base that I cut, um, and then I glue on some, some top pieces of stone just to cover that uh, little piece of chipboard. Everything got based in black, and for some reason the video didn't show, I didn't get the video uh, made of me painting the bases in a sand color. Everything got a sand color over the black. Then I went and used some miniature paints to paint like the barrels and the wood pieces, the, uh, the statue, the shields, the various elements that, um, that I wanted to stand out. I just used some, some standard miniature paint for that. I dry brushed over the monument with some gray so that the runes really stand out. And then I took that same gray and dry brushed all of the basing over the sand 
just to give it a mix of browns and grays for the ground. I also went over it with white later, just a very light dry brushing of white. Here I am going over all the pieces with that gray just to tone down that sandy, uh, sandy color. I hit the shields with some silver, uh, and I didn't do them really perfect. I wanted them to look roughed up, so I, I dry brushed them a little bit and uh, left some scratches. Okay, there you go. I wanted to make some scatter terrain, and I wanted to make it quick, as in like a speed build. So what I'm going to show you in just a second is the final results of five pieces that I made in less than two hours. Actually, it's probably close to, closer to an hour and a half. Not a lot of time here. Um, with scatter terrain, I don't feel it necessary to go crazy with the detailed painting. It should look beat up, scruffy, you know, weathered. And I think that's what I got here. So I made five different styles. I don't know what else to call them. So I've got the wall piece here, uh, which is just a, a piece of, piece of uh, ruined wall. And for this, I used a technique that I've done in other videos where I cut squares and rectangles of foam and I cut them in different thicknesses and different sizes. And when you glue them on, they give a three-dimensional appearance because they that's exactly what it is. As you can see, the stones actually poke out in various ways. So that's one of them. This one is my fallen statue, which the lighting in here is not making it a little difficult to see, but the base and the statue and the shattered arms and head that are on uh, are painted slightly different than the ground, so they stick out a little bit, although on the screen they really don't. So that was another one that I made. This one's actually my favorite one. This is just the pile of rubble. I had some old barrels that I had 3D printed, a couple shields I stole from some sprues of uh, plastic soldiers, and then the rest is just little pieces of uh, wood, not uh, toothpicks. I found a whole bunch of these at, uh, at Hobby Lobby. They're, they're like toothpick size, but they're actually square profile. They're like a little beam of wood, and they look the texture looks perfect, and when you break them, they look like shattered beams. So as you can see, here's my piece of uh, just rubble. Uh, the shield is laying across the, uh, the top of the barrel. There's another dented shield down here. This one's probably my favorite of the five. Uh, I made an obelisk with um, you know arcane writing on it, which this one turned out, I, I like this one too. Um, this one was actually the fastest. I made this one the quickest. Cutting, beveling the uh, the foam with my Proxon helped. If you don't have a Proxon, you can do this by hand. It just won't may not be as accurate. And then um, gluing it on, uh, scratching in the uh, the runes with a ballpoint pen, and then painting it up. And then finally, the last one is another bit of rubble. This is what I call the uh, the, the the trash tent. It's like a tent that has fallen. I used real canvas. I have a little bed roll here. Uh, the wood beams, um, and then I just sort of collapsed it and glued it so that it looks like it fell. When all the paint and glue was dried, I hit the um, the tent, the canvas, with some dirty paint water to give it that uh, that old look. So there you go, five pieces of scatter terrain, all made in about an hour and a half, and uh, I'm quite pleased with that. And I'll probably end up making more because, as I said, when I played the Frostgrave game. I bring often a lot of bigger pieces, centerpieces and structures, buildings, but what I haven't got a lot of is the little scatter terrain, the junk pieces that you put around uh, that, that represent um, rough terrain or places to, to hide or block line of sight. These little, these little things are perfect for that. So I hope this has given you some ideas and inspiration to go and make your own scatter terrain. And uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to address them. All right, that's it for this week. Again, just friendly reminder, please come join me over at the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page. I post um, photos from projects I'm working on that may not necessarily make it to a video. Uh, I post links of interest to fellow gamers and crafters and things like that. Also, please come join us over at the Tabletop Crafters Guild. I am one of the six guild masters over there, and we have got a community of over 35,000 people 
who all share this hobby of crafting and gaming and making stuff for their tabletop. And it's just a great place to hang out and share what you're working on and ask questions and, and stuff like that. Lastly, if you are not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. Also, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the didn't like button. I think that's the down, <laughs> the thumb down. All right, that's it. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. I will be back next week, next Wednesday, with a new video. Everyone, take care.